There were times when I used to carry out 20, 25, 30 or even 35 abortions every day. We used to work five days a week. Dr. Adasevich was for a long time convinced that what he was doing was merely removing so-called postnatal tissue from a woman's body. Not until he carried out the ninth abortion on his cousin's fiance did he change his mind. I opened up the womb, tore the placenta, the birth waters flowed out and I got to work on the insides with my abortion forceps. I grabbed something, crushed it a little, removed it and threw it onto a cloth. I look and I see a hand, quite a large hand. The child was three and a half, perhaps four months old. I had no tape to measure it. Someone had spilled some iodine on a part of the table and the hand fell in such a way that the nerve ends came into contact with the iodine. And what happened? I look and I say, my God, the hand is moving by itself. I nevertheless carry on with my forceps and again catch something, crush it and pull it out. I think to myself, let it not be a leg. I pull and look, a leg. I want to put the leg on the table, carefully, so that it isn't near the moving hand. As my arm falls, I hear a bang behind my back. I jumped and automatically my grip on the forceps loosened. At this very moment, the leg completed a somersault and landed next to the hand. I look. Both hand and leg are moving by themselves. I nevertheless once again direct my instrument into the womb and begin to crush everything inside. I think to myself that all I need to complete the picture is the heart. I continue to crush and crush and crush until I am sure that I have ground everything inside into a pulp and once again pull out the forceps. As I pull out the mass, thinking it will be bone fragments and lay it on the cloth, I look and I see a human heart, contracting and expanding and beating, beating, beating. I thought I would go mad. I can see that the heartbeat is slowing, ever more slowly and yet more slowly still, until it finally stops completely. Nobody could have seen what I had seen, with my very own eyes, and be more convinced than I was that I had killed a human being. I used to do it carelessly, ever faster, reacting ever more nervously to women. They were matter, they were not women as people. One had to perform one's task as quickly as possible, a predetermined number of operations a day, and then immediately leave the surgery. There were feelings of unease, a glass of cognac, alcohol, any kind of tranquilizer, and that would suffice. They taught us and they told us that life began with the first cry, when a baby cries for the first time, that up to that moment a human being is like any other organ in a mother's body, like an appendix. The removal of an appendix from a mother's body is not murder. Only a child that had been born and had cried could be killed. If it hasn't cried, then there can be no talk of murder. That is why immediately after birth, children were taken and their heads submerged in a bucket of water. A child would then take in water instead of air and would never cry. That was therefore not regarded as murder. Terrible, but that is how things were. The discovery of the ultrascanner was a breakthrough in gynaecology. The ultrascanner made possible the observation of human life in the fetus. It immediately became apparent that by the third week of a pregnancy, the child's heartbeat becomes synchronized with that of its mother, that by the fifth week the child reacts to a caress. The measurement of brain waves confirmed that such touches bring pleasure, 
that the child feels pain. In the United States of America, over half of women who were committed to having an abortion decided against determination after seeing their child on an ultrascan screen and hearing its heartbeat. However, not in all countries is the ultrascanner used to prevent abortions. Abbiamo poi scoperto che l'ecografo serviva per una With time, we discovered what the ultrascanner was used for in Albania. It is clear that in a country where poverty is every day and where men rule, the birth of a girl in a poor family makes the family feel even poorer. Why? Because the new arrival is not someone who in the future could bring in an income. And so a new precedent was set. Not invented by Albanians, but one that is also well known throughout Southern Asia. Families force pregnant mothers to have an ultrascan to determine the child's sex. If it's a boy, then everything is okay. If, however, it turns out to be a girl, then the fetus has to be removed. The pregnancy has to be into its fourth or even fifth month before an ultrascan will show a child's sex. That means that a woman must wait five months before she can determine the child's sex. Abortion is legal here up to the third month. However, there is also a special commission that can allow abortions to be carried out beyond the legal limit. It can happen that the commission will, for a bribe, prepare a falsified report. Later, hospital staff are obliged to respect the decision of the special commission. Such fraudulent decisions are, in the majority of cases, issued on the grounds of the mother's ill health. Getting rid of girls in Albania is a widely practiced fact can clearly be seen from the national statistics. In countries with a normal demographic distribution, there are always more women than men. However, in Albania, there are up to 6% more men than women. Such a state of affairs would not be possible were it not for the mass annihilation of female fetuses. In fact, very early on, as a small child, I thought about how it is that a child can land in a dustbin. That thought has remained with me right through to adulthood. I found out that a company employed to keep the city clean has a lorry assigned to disposing of containers that it collects from an abortion clinic and that these containers hold pieces of children. I inquired at the company and was informed that the containers were taken to an incinerating facility in Simmerin. There, at a temperature of 1200 degrees centigrade, the children's remains are burned in a blazing incinerator. The remaining ashes are then transported to be stored at the local authority tip. It is to this place that all of Austria's hospitals send their so-called medical waste for burning, including the remains of the killed, unborn children.